Hi, a lot has happened in the last six months. No, I'm not talking about the global pandemic. I'm referring to all the governing we've been up to, from law and order, education, labor. Have you realized rules governing crucial aspects of our life have been drafted, put up for debate, and closed? I'm Anubha Bhosle, and here on Newsworthy, we do news worthy of your time. There are six crucial laws, drafts, notifications that concern you that have been put up, deliberated, and shut to some extent, all while a pandemic rages on. It actually didn't require too much digging on our part, just some joining the dots. Number one, the Environment Impact Assessment Notification. It was open for public consultation. You've heard a lot about this, so I'll just sum it up by saying the document relates to making sure big ticket infrastructure projects don't damage the environment more than they add value. Bagjan is still blazing, so I leave it at that to underline how crucial this notification is. The feedback period is now closed. Because the draft was released online in a pandemic, much of this country did not have a fair shot at critiquing it. This includes those most affected by it, tribals, Adivasis. Number two. Recently, on 24th August, the Ministry of Mines released a proposal for mining reforms on its website. Have you heard about it? I guess not. The proposal is open for 10 days till 3rd September for comments, suggestions from the public, state governments and industry stakeholders. This goes against the pre-legislative consultation policy of the government that such documents have to be placed in public domain for at least 30 days. One of the things being suggested here is potentially allowing private sector companies to undertake exploration to identify mineral deposits, something only government and public sector players do till now. This proposal has implications. Are they best discussed in the middle of a pandemic quietly in 10 days? A similar thing happened with the draft transgender, transgender rules, I beg your pardon, 2020. Released on July 13th, for just 30 days. Over 100 transgender activists and several groups appealed to the government to postpone the consultation period until after the pandemic. The lockdowns had made face-to-face -face consultation between members of this community impossible. Not to forget, the transgender community is struggling for basic survival more than usual this year. Was this the best time then? Number four, labor laws. Around April, May, when the devastation caused by the lockdown started becoming clear, several states, including Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, announced sweeping changes in labor laws. The apparent goal was to give some relief to impacted industries. But we're talking about suspending or diluting key labor laws that protect workers from exploitation. It includes extension of work time to beyond eight hours a day and relaxing factory inspection norms. The ILO intervened and then a joint parliamentary committee calls on state governments to desist from making such sweeping changes in the labor laws. Even then, just 15 days ago, the Uttar Pradesh cabinet has empowered the state government to suspend certain provisions of the Uttar Pradesh Industrial Disputes Act and the Factories Act. Other laws that are coming up for changes and reforms during the pandemic are India's 150 year old criminal laws, mainly the Indian Penal Code, the Criminal Procedure Code and the Indian Evidence Act. Now, on May 4th, the Home Ministry instituted a five member all male committee for reforms in criminal law. The standing orders in six months by the 10th of October read review, consult, discuss, and suggest changes to the IPC, the CRPC, and the IEA. The process is more than 50% complete already. There's a website with questions where experts and people are invited to give feedback. Hundreds of lawyers, academics, jurists are asking for the committee to be suspended effective immediately. There are a whole lot of reasons, including some substantive ones like methodology but six months to review thousands of 150 year old laws, something we have known and agree we need to do for decades now. We are putting out a full coverage plan on this, so watch out for it. Finally, the new national education policy. This one is different. It wasn't rushed. It's been nearly six years in the making. 
committee reports, drafts, expert feedback, the entire deal. But suddenly, during the pandemic, the government announces the new policy. It wasn't debated in parliament. Its release wasn't discussed with state governments. Remember, even though education falls in the concurrent list, now it's no one's case that governance needs to come to a standstill during a pandemic. These are all important reforms and changes that have been pending for years. They must happen. Life must go on. Absolutely. The problem isn't that the government is working on all these changes or doing all of this when some would say its priority needs to be mitigating the vast impact of COVID-19. Let's assume for a second it's not an either or situation. The government is doing both things. It is taking care of the impact of COVID-19 and getting on with the business of governance. At the heart of this is that you're establishing controversial, crucial policies during a disaster, during a pandemic, when people are too physically, mentally and financially exhausted to engage, to develop an adequate response, an adequate opposition a robust critique. Some would argue that's why it isn't the right time. Some would argue that's why it is. I'll leave it here. If you've been watching, thank you for your time.